So um, I'm very, very excited about today. I don't know why. I feel like it's my birthday or something. And maybe it is. Maybe it is the birthday of the next era in our crystal surgery training all across the world. And I'm just so excited to have you all um, here with us, new faces and new people, as well as regulars who've been doing the courses and the study groups and so on. So <clears throat> it's very meaningful for me to have you all come and attend the Zoom presentation and help to energize it. And of course, we're making a recording for people that can't attend for whatever reasons. I mean, it's a Saturday, not actually even for everybody necessarily. I think for those people where we like to say down under, I'm not sure how Australians and New Zealanders feel about the down under phrase, but for them it's the middle of the night and some of them said please will there be a recording and of course there'll be a recording that's the whole advantage of doing it this way isn't it so last time we did a zoom presentation the topic of treating shock came up and the person asked me well how do we do that because i was telling a story which i will tell again because i'm not even sure how many of you were on that call um, but I was telling that story and then the person said, oh, but then how do you treat Chuck? And I said, well, that is technical. That is a procedure that does have step by step. It's not the kind of thing we do on the Zoom presentation. And afterwards, I thought, why not? It's really, really, really important information. And shock is a topic that uh, requires a lot of insight and recognition, mainly because shock if not treated, accumulates in the body and each shock that we get builds on a shock that we previously had. And I would say that's the most important thing to remember about shock is that it is cumulative and that Western medicine doesn't actually treat shock. It keeps you alive when you're in shock and hopes, kind of hopes for the best. And we see various forms of issues coming through that. So I'll give you an example. If any of you has experienced uh, one of your loved ones or even yourself going through open heart surgery, that is a tremendous shock to the energetic system. And afterwards, there is a condition called pump head. And it's named after the fact that your uh, body has been put on a pump instead of your heart. Your heart has been stopped. Your body's been put on a pump. And then your heart gets reconnected and um, you're kind of sent home with this confusion in your energetic system about whether you are actually dead or alive. And we know about this firsthand because Neil uh, had to have open heart surgery uh, back in 2016, I think it was, in January 2016, 20, 2015 actually. And... Um, it was it was really horrible and then he got to the point where he just said i just want to feel like myself again and so we asked around and fortunately on our alexander training course uh, which was running at that time there was a woman who was very familiar she was a nurse or had been a nurse she was very familiar with the condition pump head and she told us what to do and actually in the end it was acupuncture that got neil's uh, chi reaching his brain again because basically his chi was coming up getting to the heart chakra and not actually getting to the crown so there are these conditions that indicate that the energetic system is not functioning again so the energetic system has its own rules and the physical system has its own rules and in between those two systems we have a bunch of other systems that are in operation and we need to see what's going on. In crystal surgery, we divide it up into the physical body, the energy field, and the energy body. And those are three places that need to be assessed separately and then to see how they're coordinating with each other. When it comes to shock, in our language, we actually have words that depict the energetics it quite accurately of, of what we do. We say things, and these are in English, and I'd love to know what these expressions are in other languages 
because they're bound to be there and they're bound to be very revealing and add other perceptions and insights about the nature of the energetic system versus the physical system. So one of the things we say is, I half died of fright. And that's exactly what you do when you half die of fright. Half of your energy body is jumping, literally jumping out of your physical body. But we even say that I got such a shock, I jumped out of my skin. Now, that was one that came from my childhood. When I was a little girl, my dad told me that my grandma was going to jump out of her skin when she saw how many mushrooms we'd picked in the forest. <laughs> and I was uh, three years old and I was very eager to see what someone looked like when they jumped out of their skin. And um, <laughs> we went to my, to my grandma and showed her the mushrooms and I waited and I waited and I watched intently. And finally, I couldn't take the suspense anymore. And I tugged on my dad's arm and I said, Dad, when's she going to jump out of her skin? And my dad said she did already. And I thought, oh, no, I missed it. I missed it. And I had this vision which was surprisingly accurate of what all these veins and arteries would look like. I mean, I had red and blue map in my mind and all kinds of things. But and now, but the expression, of course, is an energetic expression and it's an energetic jumping out of our skin. And it is actually what we do. And the thing is to get back in. We must, must get back in side after shock. And that's one of the things that does need to be treated. Another thing that we, that we say as in, in, and depicts the energetics is we say, I was beside myself. I was beside myself. That's exactly what happens. Your energy body can go off to the side. So it can be start jumping out. It can go to the side and uh, it can, you can half half die I mean the energy body that is a lot if your energy body is halfway out that that would be a lot now the important thing is to understand that the energy body is like the battery it is the battery of your physical body and it needs to sit inside your physical body and it needs to connect at the connection points which are of course one of the connection points is the chakras that's where your energy body and your physical body need to be like a hand in a glove with the connection points working uh, correctly. So some of them may not be all there and you can and then you're kind of half dead because of half your connection points aren't connecting correctly. Not it's like the battery isn't seated correctly in the battery holder. And we're very resilient. We have a wide range of tolerance. We're also very fragile. That both things are true and I always say that truth lies in paradox so we can, we're very resilient we can tolerate quite a lot of incorrectness for want of a better way to say or less than ideal situation we can be quite flexible and then there are other things where it's on a hair trigger and that goes wrong you're, it's it's finished the, it's game over so we and we have to be careful and of course always remember everyone's an individual what one person's system can tolerate may be the hair trigger for someone else's system. We don't know. We can't generalize from one case to another. You can have two people, and this I've seen so much, you know, next month is going to be 40 years that I've been working in the field. It will be 40 years since I went to London and graduated in 1983, certified as a teacher of the Alexander Technique. And it was the Alexander Technique that put me firmly on the road of this work even though it doesn't include the kind of things we're talking about now it became a platform for discovering this energy energy stuff and all of this so i just want to say when it comes to the to the energy anatomy especially to do with the energy body um not the chakras obviously that's got ancient um, roots and and it's an ancient knowledge but when it comes to the information about the energy body and the information that I talk about in the advanced energy anatomy, I have uh, come upon it myself. It's my original work. I don't even know if other writers and authors and researchers are finding the same information. What we're doing is researching this in the crystal surgery community. And so I can't even vouch for what other people are saying about this advanced energy anatomy because it is coming from what I am seeing 
when I am working and then by also comparing notes with the advanced students who are now actually graduates, which is part of why this is a new era, um, because I am just looking at what I am seeing and what I am detecting and what I am learning. Um, I have seen one other person was at, next to me at a booth at a, at a, a metaphysical fair who had information about the energy body that was identical to what I've come up with. And I think that's the way it should be. It's like if we look at human beings, we see a head, two eyes, two nostrils, a mouth, two arms, two legs. So it should be that if we are looking at the energy body and the energy field, different people are seeing the same things because we're looking at the same stuff. And that is the best way we can confirm this information because it's not visible to the naked eye that's not trained in seeing beyond the consensual reality of our scientific um, trends, as it were. And those of us working in this field have to accept that what we're working with is essentially considered invisible. It's palpable. It can become visible to us if we can expand our capacity to see with our third eye and to perceive these things. It's perceptible but it's not something we're seeing with our physical eyes. And so that's a little bit difficult, more difficult to research. Um, so what I want to do is now go to the method that's in the crystal surgery textbook. But I do want to say that this is an energetic procedure. You do not need any crystals for it. It's an important procedure, whether you're doing energy healing or Reiki or massage therapy or anything like that. It is a good skill to add uh, uh, to your repertoire. It's a good technique to have because you want to uh, you want to be able to include this and you, you don't need crystals. Crystals help. They make it easier. They give you support and assistance in various ways. But this is something that is done with intention and it is an energetic procedure. doesn't require crystals. So I first learned it and I'll tell the story now and then we'll go over and I'll demonstrate how to do it. So I first learned this back in South Africa before I was doing any um, energy healing or working on the chakras or so on. I was purely an Alexander teacher at that time. I was very, very busy. I was seeing I cut down to um, 15 people a day. I know that's hard to believe, but those were half hour sessions. I worked an eight and a half hour day um, giving sessions and I was 15 appointments per day. And I learned a lot because I was seeing so many different people. It's what tipped me off to the energetic dynamic dynamics from person to person. And I won't go into a myriad of stories around that, but it's where I started to develop my intuition because I'd start to think things and then a minute later people would say stuff. So there was one example which I will share. I was looking at a client and I was holding his head and when I was holding his head I couldn't feel his legs. And that's something you want to be able to do when you're an Alexander teacher. You want to be able to sense all the way through a person's entire being, as no matter where your hands are, no matter where your connection point is. And I felt, why does it, I'm wondering, why does it feel like he's cut off just below the knees? This is a strange sensation that I'm getting. It wasn't obvious, it was subtle, but it was clear to me compared to what it felt like when I held other people's heads and I could sense all the way down to the tips of their toes. About one minute later, he said, you know, when I was five, they were going to amputate both my legs just below the knees. And that, it, it, it startled me. I just went, whoa. I just want to ask that question and here came the answer and that started to tip me off about what I was actually picking up and how I needed to say it out loud even if I was feeling foolish even if it felt like I got to be making this up I needed to start speaking what I was getting under appropriate circumstances and in an appropriate manner you certainly don't tell everybody what thought is going through your stream of consciousness that's not a good idea and you have to check is this the right time to be saying this to a client 
But be, beyond that, it is important, was important to start speaking about the intuitive information I was picking up. And I don't even know if it was intuitive, because for me, it was coming through my sensory capacities and my training as an Alexander teacher, but it would fall into the realm of intuition because it wasn't factual and scientific in that moment. So this was a client, I had a client, and I have told this story before, but it's important in this presentation to tell the story again. And he's a cricket player, and that's a, a sport that uh, if you live in the US, you may not be familiar with, but it has a very, very, very hard ball. A cricket ball is very hard and it's red as well. And they polish it under their arms like this and they get a big red patch like that. But a big hard ball about that size. And the cricket ball had hit him on his middle finger in on his left hand, like so there. And when the cricket ball hit his finger, it, it this joint over here exploded, literally. It just exploded. So the pressure... It just popped the joint and everything broke up and the tendons broke up. And it was a long weekend. It wasn't the Easter weekend, which is a long weekend in South Africa, but it was a long weekend. And in, he decided instead of going to a private clinic, which is what he should have done and getting a, a private uh, surgeon, he went to the general hospital called Hrutuskir, which some of you may know, and remember, it was where the first heart transplant was performed by Dr. Christian Barnard back in the 19, I think it was 1968. It was a very famous hospital as a consequence of his very first heart transplant. And he went and sat at Hrutuskir Hospital together with all the stab victims and all the crazy stuff that went on in Cape Town. And he sat there and waited. And they um, were just before the surgery where they were going to fuse the joint he remembered to tell them that he was a pianist and of course he can't have a fused joint then because then he wouldn't ever be able to play the piano with all his fingers and so they said then we can't do the surgery we'll have to call the hand surgeon but the hand surgeon was at a holiday resort about two and a half hours drive from Cape Town a holiday resort called Hermanus as I know there's some South Africans that will also be joining in with this call so he, the hand surgeon was at his holiday home in Hermanus and had to come into Cape Town to the hospital to do the surgery and he had to do this microsurgery and reattach all the ligament and tendons through the joint and the um, and the surgery was a failure it didn't take um, and so about four or five days later when they realized that it was a failure but it may have been a week later they had to break it again and reattach and redo the surgery and it was a success. This time it was a success. One year later, this client showed me, he said, Vivian, look, I cut the fingernails on this hand twice a week. I haven't cut my fingernails on this hand in a year. The fingernails had not grown at all in a year. So I looked and all the skin here on his left hand was yellow. His nails had yellowed and you could see the tissue was just hanging there. It reminded me, I was quite a keen gardener and I was a very keen container gardener because I didn't have a, a backyard, I was in an apartment and so on. And it reminded me of a plant that's getting just enough water to stay alive, but not enough water to grow. And I realized that there was no turnover of tissue, there was no, gro there was no growth and healing going on. His hand was alive, but that was it. And I realized in that moment, and I guess it was the beginning of me getting guidance and intuition, that what had happened was that the shock had so shocked his hand, the shock of the cricket ball hitting and then the waiting for the surgery and then the actual surgery, which wasn't a success, 
and then the breaking of the finger again and then the having to do the surgery again so everything was alive but not well and definitely not thriving and it was all the way up to his elbow I could feel this lack of vibrance a lack of liveliness and so I used my Alexander skills to calm everything down so in the Alexander technique just to be clear about this we're very interested in something called startle pattern because it puts us it locks us into this kind of position where our head pulls back and our shoulders come up and that startle position which is of course what happens when we get a shock so I realized that entire forearm was in shock and I needed to bring all of this out of shock so I used my Alexander skills the way I use it for reorganizing the head neck back relationship and I used my skills which and it's specifically a skill called inhibition where you calm your entire nervous system down very very quiet and calm and that needs to be conveyed to all of your nervous system that quality of being calm and get everything breathing evenly and so on and so I used that thinking that intention and that skill that was kind of suffused into my being as an Alexander teacher to bring the startle out of all the cells of his forearm and hands and it was just by thinking that and literally just stroking through like this just doing that and thinking my inhibition thoughts and my Alexander technique and if you're wanting to do this if you're a massage therapist or an Alexander teacher you can do this for someone and bring the tissue out of startle and out of shock and that's what you have to do before you ask the energy body to come back into the physical system this must had to become inhabitable again for him and it did so then just by doing that and I, because then I, I kind of could see this other this other hand hanging out and it, as I worked the hand started to shift in the energy body's hand shifted back in and came back into his hand I also had to do this when Neil decided he might perhaps be departing the planet and he was actually having what turned out to be a carotid artery dissection which is a which causes a stroke and, and a clot broke free from his carotid artery went up into his brain and he was stroking out and he was starting to leave and I could see it at that point this was this was now um, in uh, 2002 November the 5th 2002 and I saw his energy body start to leave his physical body and his foot was up at his thigh and I went oh no my dear you're not going anywhere I'm not going to bring our boys up on my own and I grabbed his foot it was actually his right foot and I pulled of his energy body and I pulled his right foot back into his physical body's foot and I pinned it in with my hand and I held it there till the paramedics arrived and started thumping his chakras to get him to come out of shock and come back, come back to uh, the physical world, which he did. And that's why we can have him helping us on the Zoom calls. So I actually, it, 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 it's actually important. I mean, firstly, our pianist got his hand back and got everything restored and Neil's still alive so we're talking big stuff we're not talking small stuff but people are walking around in a state of half dead and beside themselves and um, those kind of um, expressions and when you know that that's what the issue lots and lots of things go wrong when people's energy bodies are not seated correctly in their physical bodies and it's the easiest thing to correct energetically if you know how but the part that isn't easy is making the physical body inhabitable again and you do have to do that first now what you have to do to make the physical body inhabitable again depends on who you are working on it depends on that individual it depends on what that person needs and that 
you have to figure out on your own and you have to use your methods whether it's reiki or energy healing or crystal healing or crystal surgery or whatever it is massage therapy it can be any modality it can be any body work but you need to make the physical body hospitable and appealing to the energy body first and then you get to follow the procedure that I'm going to show you now. So Neil's going to change which um, station the camera is on and we'll go over to the book and to the crystal tools and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, very good. Focus in on this or not really? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Thanks. All right. So this procedure is called bringing the energy body back into the physical body. And we have some diagrams over here that Mary Beth did for us really nicely. The um, the sort of pinky purple color that is the energy body we decided to use that to denote the energy body and you can see this is this is this is quite a, this is up the energy body is up it's not properly gloved into the into the leg it's up above the shoulders the one arms coming up I just wanted to show you what kind of things this can look like over here, the energy body is leaking out over the boundaries of the physical body, not good, and so on. But also, we can look at this picture here. And you can see how in, in some instances, the energy body can float up. This is, this is not good. This is not a good... Not good if the energy body is out this much. You don't want that. If the tethers break, you're done. That's it. You've, you're, now the energy body is too separated from the physical body. So if someone's in a car accident and the energy body gets jerked out of the physical body, you do want to restitch like this. So this is another, another thing that you can look at. And crystals are good for, for restitching. I'm not sure how to do this with your hands. But um, you don't have to. I, I guess all energy healers can have, you know, about five or six crystals that they use. And I would say this is a worthwhile reason to have a crystal or two to be able to do this. Um, but let's go back to page 233. And let's do this procedure. And I'll show you how to funnel. I'll show you how to use... I'll show you the stones that taught this to me and I will also show you the stones um, uh, how to use how to do it even if you don't have any stones or maybe if you only have one stone so if you want to look at this there is a free view a free PDF view of the textbook on crystalhealingtechniques.com uh, and you can just go to the free PDF view and look at page 233 and you'll be able to read through all of this and you'll be able to look at other aspects of the book and you'll see that this is a textbook that can be used by energy healers it's not only for people who want to do crystal surgery you'll be very interested to see what else is here all right so that's where we're working 
And I can put this here. <coughs> so, the stones that taught me how to do the procedure as we do it now are these two aquamarines. This is a pair of aquamarines that I bought together from my friend Jean. Barbara and I uh, arrived in Denver and Jean met us at the airport and he had these two stones in his hand that he'd actually got from another Cincinnati dealer but that was, who was also in Denver and I took one look and I went those are mine I'm gonna to have to buy those and he he didn't hesitate but let me get them and at a very good price too so this one is a hollow tube And it's hollow all the way through and that's what you want you want a stone that is a hollow tube hollow all the way through and the one that will come in that formation most readily is fulgurite so this is a hollow tube hollow all the way through you can get fulgurite that's not got the hollow tube you can use a small a tiny little fulgurite but it must have a hollow tube. Anyway, I was taught by these this, these aquamarines and they do do a fine job. And so then you get a second crystal that acts as a funnel. And you literally funnel the energy body back into the physical body uh, with this movement. So if you're working on a proxy crystal, there's my proxy crystal. I need to know where my chakras are on my proxy crystal, but you can do this in person as well. You just do it on the chakras. So this is the root. This is the second chakra. This is the solar plexus. This is the heart. This is the throat. This is the third eye. And this over here is the crown. And so then I just go to the chakras and I literally now this is after I've done all the healing techniques needed to create a hospitable physical body and then I just funnel the energy body back in through the chakras like that this really works well but I don't expect you to find anything like these tools but this is available, fulgurite is available if you want it. It doesn't even have to be such a fancy fulgurite. You can get a stone that's got a portal in it like this. I'll let me come in on the, with the camera a little bit so you can see. There's a little diamond shaped portal there. And I'll show you. I can stick my pencil through. So that will that will work by that that will also work and it does work. And it asked me, this is Kunzite actually, the stone, and it said, Aren't you going to take me for the for the presentation? I said, okay. So then this aquamarine said yes, me too. This is another one, and it also has that portal there. Okay. See, and you don't need you don't need a big fancy crystal. I just like big fancy crystals, as so many crystal people do. See, there's another portal. Ah, I hope you could all hear. There's the microphone coming closer. All right, so you don't need that, and then you don't. You can use. And this wand asked me to come, so you don't need an aquamarine. You can use what's called a basic wand, where it's got a Diamantina on one end and a Lemurian on the other. And you can funnel like that. Okay. You pulse up and down. But you don't even need that. You can make a funnel with your hand. And that's quite a nice funnel. nice funnel and of course you don't actually put the fun the crystal in you you work above like so 
and you invite in and if you don't have a fancy wand like this that's no problem just use a smaller crystal like that now can you use your finger it doesn't work so well if you try it you'll see the energetics are not great so all you need to be able to do this is one crystal one crystal point and then you can make a funnel with your hand but it is a good idea to have a crystal because you don't really want to touch the energy body with your hands you don't really want to touch the energy body with your hands you don't want to touch you, you can sometimes touch the energy body with your hands as long as you prepare yourself mentally for that but you never want to touch cords and cording with your hands because cords are unhygienic i'll just put it to you that way so you don't ever touch cords with your hands and the energy body because because the energy body needs to be uh, um, at its own vibrational frequency hands have a your physical hands have a different vibrational frequency it's better to use crystals it's why i use crystals it's why we use why we have crystal surgery is because when you're working with the etheric tissue of the energy body it's a very different vibrational frequency it's quite difficult having said that i do sometimes massage the heart of the energy body with my hands but then the guides put a special layer between my hands and what i'm doing so there is a way that you, the, the guides, you can ask the guides to glove your hands so that you can work with the energy body and that might help. In fact, let me try that now that, you know, they're whispering in my ears, I'm presenting and they're saying, you can say this, you can say that. And that's why it changes a little bit as I'm going along. So let me see if I glove my finger, if I let them, as I said, then rather use your baby finger. So glove the baby finger. That's it, and it's more gentle, and that I can feel is working. So that's good, but I'm more comfortable using a crystal, so I will. And there we are. So now the crown, I had to come this way. Actually, they're saying, why don't you hold it like so to do the crown? It's useful having the guides helping you as you're presenting. It, uh, it helps a lot. So there we are. So that's chakra by chakra. So say you're working on a hand, you'd make a proxy setup for the hand. So you, I'd use a palm stone. Then I'd have the put the forearm in there, and I could just make a proxy, make that the forearm, part of the forearm there, and then I'd put points here for the fingertips, for the fingers. I need another. There's a, suddenly there's a shortage of crystals here, who knew? All right, let's put this one here. Back that the middle finger. All right, so now I've got a, a, a proxy set up for a hand. So if, if I were working on that client and it were a remote session and I wanted to work on his hand, I could do it here like this. And just funnel in specifically there that so the procedure itself is pretty straightforward and 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 easy however the prep to make the physical body hospitable that's got to be done because otherwise the energy body is going to say ha, forget that i am not going back now what we're talking about here is the energy body's relationship with the physical body this is not soul retrieval soul retrieval is a different uh, method and it's a different technique it's shamanic that's neil's expertise maybe one day he'll do a presentation for you on one of these zoom calls and teach you a little bit about soul retrieval and when it's indicated and and so on it's not uh, something that you can just do you have to get quite a lot of shamanic training have a very good relationship with your spirit guides but even this you're working with your spirit guides and they're helping you in this so this is not the same. This is your energy body. It's part of your energy system. And your spirit and soul are different dynamics at a different vibrational frequency. Not the same as this. All right. Let's, um, let me go back to the other station and see if you've got any questions. 
and if I can answer them, I will try my best. All right. So, um, so we can speak to Neil if you want a shamanic course. I am actually thinking of asking him to do one, a course for Four Winds Academy in the next, in the upcoming semester. Which, just by the way, if you're interested in, in joining any of the classes, the next semester begins August 12th. But we also are keeping everything at the old prices until July 1st. So you have to register and pay your first installment. You can use a payment plan by June 30th if you want to get study group or the courses on the CRISPR website at the old price. So that's for Aligned Aqua. Are there any shamanic courses available? Can anyone learn how to sense, sense energy as you do? I know things, but have a challenge sensing. Thank you. Okay, so if you D, if you go to um, the um, the YouTube playlist on how to read energy, then you'll see a series of videos that are actually part of a course called How to Read Energy that we teach. In fact, we're currently going through that. But the first step is to just watch those videos and see I've taken the energy reading information and I have broken it up into seven or eight lessons. I've done an analysis of what's going on, how it is, how it all came about, worked retroactively, worked backwards, forwards and sideways and came up with a, a class called How to Read Energy. I want you to be very, very clear, everybody, and I will be talking about this after Deborah's presentation, that reading energy is not the same as medical intuition. There are two different dynamics. In reading energy, you are looking at the energetic system. When you're doing medical intuition, you're looking at the condition of the physical body um, primarily, and then looking at perhaps at some of the energetic layers. So just to be clear, how to read energy is what you're asking, D, how to sense the energy. And you have to begin somewhere. It comes over time with lots and lots of practice. As I say, the reason it started to manifest for me was because I was seeing as many people as I were. It's not something you can do in an abstract way. You have to get the practical experience and it builds from practical experience because you have to start. It's a comparative process. Again, because we're working with something that's not visible. All right, so Jennifer was confused. She said, I, she thought she heard me say, this is um, not, oh, can everyone hear me now again? Just someone say, yes, we can hear. Yes, you're perfectly clear, Vivian. Okay, thank you. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So Jennifer said she was confused. I said, you do not have to use crystals. It didn't come to me from using crystals. It didn't come to me when I was doing crystal healing. It began when I was as an Alexander teacher back in the 1990s with the person with the cricket ball. But now I use crystals. So that's the confusion there is that, and you don't need to use crystals. So I hope it's all clear to you now, Jennifer. Okay, so then um, Vicky wants to know, can you confirm the page number? Yes, it's page 233. And the free PDF access, you have to go to the website. Neil, where, how do you go? You go to the website and then Neil will, will tell us the steps, Vicky, for getting to uh, the free PDF access. It, it should be, the, the website is crystalhealingtechniques.com. So you books and crystals tab across top then so then you drop down you click on view the complete guide to crystal surgery PDF and then view the PDF and then
Okay. So here's the answer. You, um, the website is crystalhealingtechniques.com. Okay, so someone wants to, uh, uh, the land aqua says, how can I perform cord cutting? I saw your video and purchased hemimorphite and convoluted sheet cords. Okay, so um, you don't cut cords. That's the first thing you want to know. You pull cords. Cords are like weeds. If you cut them, they're sticky. They just stick themselves back together again. So don't cut cords. Pull cords. That's number one. That I learned from... Um, from Melody when I did the Melody training. That's when I first encountered the whole chord thing. So don't, cord, don't cut chords, pull chords, okay? Then you must watch the YouTube videos on how to do that. And I don't know which ones they're on, but they're, they're, they're there. And you, um, there's the hemimorphite and convoluted sheet, sheet chords if you're new to buy those, you must have seen it somewhere. But you can also look at the PDF. Actually, let me just look up the page number. Oh, uh, okay. Why am I getting direct message here? Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. Um, what else did I send you directly, Clicky? Okay, this. Let me just fix this and then. Okay, so Naila, um, For open heart surgery, I really recommend Naila that you get a, um, a you get a crystal surgery prep from someone who knows what they're doing. It's uh, open heart surgery is a big deal. You'll be fine physically. Let's make sure that you're fine on the energetic um, on the energetic front. And I I can't answer that question without actually looking at all your different energy systems and why you're needing it and what everything that's going on. So just remember, everyone is an individual and you've got to look at the individual. You cannot address, you cannot say you do this for this and you do this for this. It's not like that. It's what does this individual need? What is this individual's vulnerability? What is this individual's um, history. What is the cumulative shock record in this person? So Nella, I would, I would want to um, know a bit more before I, I said no. That's all you need. I, it, it would not be accurate. Um, no, I don't know if Nirvana quartz and convoluted sheet quartz is the same quartz. I don't think so. Convoluted sheet quartz has got a very specific appearance, and I don't know it by any other name. I don't actually know what Nirvana Quartz is. Maybe someone else knows. So Dee wants to know about when you mention cutting cords, are these typical energetic cords from just working with someone or living with someone? Okay, so cords and cording. Again, go look at the information about cords and cording in the textbook. Go to the free PDF and take a look and see what it says. This is a whole story unto itself. But thank you for these questions, because next Zoom presentation, I will speak about chords and cording, because clearly that's something people want to know about. And the next Zoom presentation will be in July, and it will be free, and it will be for all of you, and I hope you all come back for that information too, because chords and cording is a vast topic. But I will just go back to the hemimorphite and convoluted sheet chords. That's specifically relationship chords, and that includes chords from you to other people 
and it includes chords from you to older past versions of yourself. So that's all in the category of relationship chords. Okay, and that's what the hemimorphite and convoluted sheet chords work with. Okay, so I am one, I, I need to update you all that Catherine, who was going to present next, cannot present today because she ended up on a trip to the ER. And I hope she's okay, and we're hoping to hear soon that she is all right. So Deborah will be up next. After Deborah, I will come back and I am going to speak about the differences between the energetic system and the physical system because I got a wonderful email from someone in South Africa asking me some excellent, excellent questions that I very much would like to answer for her and all of you. But the answer is quite a long one if I'm going to write it all out. So I thought I'd take advantage of the Zoom presentation and talk about that. And it will go back to the whole, um, all the difficulties and questions around reading energy versus medical intuition. We'll be talking about that. So that's what we're going to do after Deborah's wonderful meditation. So what I want everyone to do is just take a two minute break, stand up, stretch your legs, get a drink of water and come back ready for Deborah and we will be handing over the screen to Deborah when we come back and regroup. Okay? Excellent. Thank you.